Hello everyone and welcome back to the Stout Stitch Crochet Podcast. My name is Zach and today I'm doing a special episode of the Stout Stitch Crochet Podcast and I'm going to talk to you about mental health tips um, that I have come up with to help makers. So as you all know, or many of you may not know actually, <laughs> everyone in my field of work knows that May is Mental Health Awareness Month and so I could not go the entire month of May without letting you guys in on some tips that I follow for myself um, whenever I'm working on projects or whenever I'm working in this field of work that I do as far as crochet or anything yarn related is concerned. And I would love to share those with you to see if maybe you might be able to gain something from it. So first off, I want to again say congratulations to the three women who won the uh, giveaway for the Mandala Ombres in my last video. However, two of you, um, Tracy Hampton and Sherry Miller, I went back and I put a comment on all three of your, um, your original comments letting you know to email me your address, and I still haven't received any emails for addresses from Tracy or Sherry. So please get me your address so that I can send you that yarn. It is just sitting here on my table in my craft room, and I don't wanna keep it for myself. I wanna be able to give it to you. So I'm gonna leave my email in the description box below. Um, that way you can see it, and hopefully if you see this video, or if anyone sees this video and you know them, um, please contact them. Like I said, I did go back to the original comments and I left a comment on there so that you should have gotten a notification, but in case you didn't, hopefully you'll see this and you will know I need your address. <laughs> so that was point one that I wanted to make. Second, you'll notice that it is May. I live in Arkansas and I am wearing a shawl. <clears throat> it's hot. <laughs> and actually, after I talk about this, I'm probably going to take it off. But one thing that I really wanted to do since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and you heard me hint about in my last video um, that I was working on a new pattern, I wanted to design a new shawl just because, you know, it was something that I have always wanted to do as far as, you know, crochet and design is concerned. After I did my scarf, um, a couple of months back, I decided that I wanted to do a shawl. I love making shawls. Um, it's something that I probably make, I probably make the most of. Um, definitely shawls. Uh, I pattern test shawls. I make shawls for markets. I make shawls for family and friends. Um, I just, I love them. I wear them myself. Um, so I wanted to design one and put my own kind of little spin on it and I also did it in green this was intentional because if you see me wear anything that I make really is not in green and I don't really know why um, I just I don't wear a lot of green but I did this in green because green is the color for mental health awareness if you've seen in my video before I actually have a tattoo if you can see it if it's not like blast it out. It's kind of faded of a green ribbon on my finger for mental health awareness. But I did this in green and it is my new pattern. Um, I actually literally just finished it and I was weaving the ends in right before I started filming <laughs> this. Um, so I have to write up the pattern, finish writing up the pattern and then get it to tester so that I can get it out hopefully um, sometime next month for you guys and I'm so excited. So I'm gonna show you. So it's not just a typical, it's an asymmetrical triangle. But if you notice along this bottom edge, I didn't wanna do something just plain. So kind of is like an accent. Also, this has not been blocked or anything at all. That's why it's a little, it's rolling a little, but that will come out. Um, but if you notice along this bottom edge, you'll see a little pattern, a little design. And so it's a chevron design that I had go all the way up the side so that it'll be a little accent whenever you're wearing it. Um, I will say, if you plan on um, making this whenever the pattern is released, I'm gonna put a note in there too. 
I originally started this in a variegated or a striped yarn, I guess, and it is more difficult to see the chevron pattern along this straight edge in a multicolored yarn. It is much easier to see it in a solid color. And so I'm gonna put that in the pattern notes, but this is my new design and I'm so excited. Um, literally whenever I made my first design in December, maybe, I think I may have started it in November about six months ago, crazy to even think about. Um, I never thought that I would actually design another thing. Um, I said that I wanted to, you know, and I did, I did want to. Um, but just knowing how difficult it was for me at first, um, I feel like I can create. Design came a little bit more difficult to me. It was a little more challenging. Um, but that's one of the things that I like to do is challenge myself and push myself out of my box. Um, that's gonna be one of the things that I talk about as far as mental health tips too. Um, so, this actually came along pretty fast. Um, I started on this just a few weeks ago, and so I wanted to show you guys this in this video. I don't have any other objects to show you in this video because I wanted it to be, you know, the main focus to be mental health, but I did do this in green and wanted to finish it for the month of May for mental health awareness, and Chevron is just, um, a little design that I like. So, I hope y'all like it. Let me know in the comments below if you do. Um, and like I said, this will hopefully be released next month. So excited. Oh, um, the yarn that I used was actually this Joy DK from Loops and Threads. If, there we go. Oh my gosh, my light. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, that is Michael's brand yarn. And this is so soft. It's 100% uh, anti-peeling acrylic. So you don't have to worry about that. You can wash this in the washer. You can put it in the dryer. Um, I always, however, I don't, it doesn't really matter what the yarn label says. I do always hand wash um, my crocheted items. Now that's a personal preference. I mean, I'm not worried about anything like, you know, my ends coming undone or anything like that. I just, I like to wash mine by hand, but if you want to throw yours in the washer with this yarn, you can do it. Certain yarns you cannot, so be sure you check the label because I don't want you to ruin something that you spent a lot of hard work and time on. Um, but I used this, and I don't know if they sell it anymore, honestly. My Michaels put it all of it on clearance probably a month or two back, and I haven't seen any more of it, and I'm kind of sad. I hope they didn't. Um, because originally I had bought eight balls of these because I was going to make a sweater. This is a DK weight, so I bought enough to make a sweater for myself and then I decided against it. Um, but this is 273 yards, and I did this entire shawl with two of these. So, less than 600 yards of yarn. And it's a pretty good size. And like I said, this is not blocked. Um, and so I imagine that it will stretch a little bit whenever I block it. Um, but again, so excited about that. Uh, so there is that. Now, into some mental health tips for makers. And as I was thinking of this, I was thinking of some of the things that I struggled with or that I still struggle with, honestly, um, and that I've talked to other makers about because in this field, it's so easy to get you know distracted or discouraged or um, overwhelmed. And so I wanna make sure that everybody's taking care of themselves, um, you know, that I'm taking care of myself. And these are just some things that I think are really important to remember. So first, one of my tips that I have, my very first one is don't compare yourself to other people. Um, this is something that I struggled with and honestly still struggle with occasionally. Um, whenever I first started crocheting, just a little over two years ago, I've not been doing this very long, um, I used to literally stress myself out over seeing projects that other people were making and I would say, oh my gosh, you know, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do anything like that. I would tear myself down. Um, you know, I wasn't really giving myself a chance 
to actually flourish and grow and learn and say, hey, you know, everybody starts from somewhere. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself. You know, look at, you know, some of the things that you've done in the past. And I've talked about this on my channel before. Um, look about, look at things that you've done in the past and see, you know, that progress and that growth that you have um, been able to show throughout your time crocheting or knitting or whatever craft that you are doing. Um, because it is very evident. Uh, and I think it's important that we are able to gauge that progress but don't compare yourself to someone else. You don't know how much time they're spending on crocheting. Um, you don't know the type of tools that they have or the type of yarn that they're always working with. You don't know if they've taken classes. You don't know if they're a beginner, if they've been crocheting since longer than you've been alive. Uh, <laughs> that's the case with a lot of people that I've met, you know. So many people that, you know, do YouTube channels or uh, sell at markets, um, these are people that I used to compare myself to. You know, before I started a YouTube channel, I found all the YouTube channels that I could um, for people who were knitters or who were crocheters. And before I even started, I was looking at stuff that they were making or that they were showing and I was saying, oh my God, there's no way, you know? Or whenever I'd go to markets to sell things um, and I would see things that other people were selling and I would say, there's no way someone's gonna come over here and buy something that's sitting on my table because they can just look you know, two tables down or across the room and see that that person is way more skilled. We can't do that, you know, because it's, it's a fast track to really beating ourselves up. Um, and we're already really tough critics on ourselves just naturally. So let's not add to that. Okay. Next, it's not a race. Um, Again, this is another thing that I struggled with. It seems as though anytime we start a project, whether it be knitting or crocheting or sewing, um, it's almost as if it's like we have to get it done very quickly. <laughs> um, sometimes we don't just enjoy the process. Um, sometimes we may have deadlines, sometimes we may have shows, or you know, we may have you know, whatever come up. And you may be making something as a gift for a birthday, a Christmas, um, a holiday, something for, you know, an outfit that you want to wear. Um, think about what you're capable of and think about the time constraints before you start a project. You know, how much time are you actually going to invest in something? Um, how much time are you spending doing this or working on this one project every day? Um, what other factors do you have going on in your life? Do you have another full-time job? Do you have children? Do you have a spouse? Do you have family members? Do you have other responsibilities in the community? Um, there's a lot of different things that go into our lives, you know? For some of us, crochet is a full-time job. You know, for some of us, it is a hobby. And so, you know, don't, don't stress yourself out over the amount of time that it takes you to complete something, especially if you're doing it for fun. You know, I've heard people say, oh, well, I've been working on this project for three weeks. You know, it really should be done by now. And I always say, well, why? You know, why should it be done by now? Um, I struggled with this just about six, seven weeks ago. I started a sweater. Um, out of fingering weight yarn and I'm crocheting it and so for those of you who know that's something that will take a very long time um, and probably a couple weeks into it I was beating myself up and I was saying I should really be a lot further along than where I am but then I was telling myself it's not like I'm gonna wear this sweater in July you know <laughs> um, I live in the south we're gonna have 90 degree weather all the way through October here so I'm not gonna be wearing sweaters anytime soon, um, unless I just wanna lounge around in it in the house, which is not my favorite thing to do. So, um, it's not a race. Enjoy the process. It's gonna be okay. Um, next, enjoy what you make. It's gonna be very difficult for you to really um, love what you're doing uh, and love spending time doing what we're doing as far as crocheting and knitting are concerned if you're not enjoying what you're making. Um, this kind of goes along with, you know, don't compare yourself to other people. Sometimes I'll see podcasters or people on Instagram um, 
post projects that they've done and I'll say, oh, I should be making that because everybody's making that, you know, or that pattern's really popular right now, so I really should be doing it because people are going to expect me to do it or people are going to expect to see it on my channel. Um, but if it's not something that you want to do, don't do it. Um, you know, I'm all for, you know, challenging yourself and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and outside of your box, like what I said earlier. Um, but if you truly, honestly do not enjoy what you're making, you're not going to have fun doing it. You're going to burn yourself out and it's going to end up in a project bag sitting somewhere as a whip for, you know, weeks or months or even years. So we don't want that. Enjoy what you make. Find things that you are going to love. Find things that you're going to use. Um, I'm a very practical crocheter. This is why you won't see me make a lot of things like, you know, amigurumi, um, because I don't really have a need for toys. Sure, I could sell them, but again, working in that type of style is not something that I enjoy. It honestly stresses me out. Um, so I'm not going to do that to myself and to my own mental health just to say that I did it. You know, um, we do this, a lot of us do this as a way to, you know, give ourselves a break from our, you know, stressful lives or get us through a difficult situation or use this as kind of a way to wind down at the end of the day. Um, and the last thing that you want to do whenever you get home from a stressful day at work is work on a project that's going to stress you out even more. So next, um, I encourage people to find or create a community. Um, if you are on social media, the crochet and knitting community is one of the best, honestly, um, that I've ever been a part of. So I'm in probably 10 or so Facebook groups. Um, I am an administrator for one, the most amazingly epic crochet group. <laughs> on Facebook and I'll post a link to that um, but it, I think it's really important for you to kind of find your tribe you know um, for a lot of us this is something that is a way to keep us you know social and engaged with other people um, I know I did this YouTube channel because I wanted to be able to interact with other makers and to meet people on a different level because I do live in a very small town in Arkansas. Um, I know one other person that lives remotely close to me that knits and or crochets. Um, and with our busy schedules, we rarely get to see each other in person. Uh, but I do love whenever I get to. <laughs> so. It is really important to have a community, um, someone or some you know group of people that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can you can talk to about projects, that you can you know vent to if something is bothering you. Um, and if you don't have that in your area in person, like I said, there's hundreds, honestly hundreds, there may be more um, of groups on Facebook. Um, there are plenty of um, people and groups on Instagram. Um, I even have friends on Snapchat and YouTube um, that are crocheters. So don't underestimate the power of social media because it can open up a variety of doors for you, okay? Um, next is I encourage people to recognize, you know, their strengths and their skills. Um, what we do is not easy. If you've ever tried to sit down and teach someone to crochet or to knit, um, it's not always the smoothest process. So recognize that, you know, we are all given gifts. Um, and this is something that is really neat because as a maker, you, you know, you get to be you know, a designer, you get to be a creator, you get to be, you know, this type of person that, um, you know, gets to make something and put it out there and have people see, you can visibly see the work that you're putting into something. And I think that shouldn't go unnoticed. You know, we should really um, be proud of ourselves and kind of lift ourselves up more because this is a skill that not everybody has. Um, and I think that is, that's really important. If we aren't recognizing that and if we're not taking into account 
you know, the work and the effort that we are putting in, um, especially into new skills that we're learning or education that we're doing to try to grow and to try to be better. Um, it's going to be hard for us to, you know, challenge ourselves in what we're doing and what we're making. So, you know, be proud of yourself. Be proud of the things that you've done and, you know, recognize, hey, I'm doing something that, you know, not everyone can do. So, it is a gift. Um, next, another tip that I have for mental health, and this is not even just for makers, but for everybody, organization is so important. Um, I was speaking earlier about how we all have so many aspects to our lives that can affect so many different things, uh, especially if crochet is not your full-time job, but you want it to be a major part of your life. You have to be organized in other areas of your life. You've just got to, you know, you don't, um, you don't want to have chaos, whether it be in work or in home life or in relationships. Um, and then try to find time or try to find the energy to put into a project. Again, it might make it more difficult for you to get to that. Um, you might get discouraged if you don't feel like you're able to spend enough time on that. Organizing, planning, setting aside time, making sure that you are, um, you know, really allotting a certain amount of time to what you want to do, prioritizing, um, saying, I'm gonna make this a priority for me for, you know, this amount of time, these days of the week um, and making sure that you're sticking with that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking time for yourself. And I, I tell this to my clients, sometimes we have to be selfish a little bit, you know? Um, we live in a world where, you know, people, some people tend to forget about taking care of themselves and want to spend a lot of time taking care of others, which is nice and it's great. And you know, I'm not discouraging you from doing something like that, but we have to set aside time for us too. So self-care is very important. And if part of your self-care is crocheting or knitting, I want you to be able to be organized enough in the other aspects of your life so that you can have time to do that. Another tip that I have for mental health is to have an escape from your escape. And this may sound weird to you at first, but whenever I work with my clients in therapy, one of the main things that we address is having coping skills, um, being able to cope or to manage through different things like depression or anxiety, stress, grief, um, all these different things, um, these different emotions that can affect us or impact us negatively. But with certain coping skills, if we do them over and over and over, um, they will tend to lose their effect. And I feel like that's the same way with crochet or knitting. Um, and I hear a lot of people in this community talk about how they've lost their crojo. I don't know what knitters say, but like a crochet mojo, um, you know, or we get burned out. Um, if we are putting pressure on ourselves to meet certain deadlines that are unnecessary or impossible, um, if we're making things that we don't enjoy, if we're doing all these different aspects of this field that we don't like, um, it's gonna be really hard for us to enjoy it. And this thing that we use as an escape is not gonna be an escape anymore. So I encourage people, you know, it's okay sometimes to put down the hook and do something else. Um, I know for me, crochet is you know one of my main coping skills that I use um, to de-stress, to work through anxiety that I have in my day-to-day -day life, but it's okay to go a few days without doing it. Um, this past weekend, actually, I did not crochet from probably Thursday night until literally tonight. So I gave myself a good four days where I didn't crochet anything at all. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. We shouldn't feel guilty for that. Um, you can still consider yourself a crocheter or a knitter um, or an artist, even if you don't do your craft every day. I still consider myself a counselor and a therapist and I don't do therapy every day either. Um, so we have to look at it in those ways. It's okay to take a break from 
your escape, okay? And to find something else to do because you don't want it to become a chore and you don't want to, you know, you don't want it to lose that effect. Whenever I pick up a crochet hook, I want to know that whenever I'm working on a project that I'm gonna get lost in it um, and that it's going to provide me with joy and happiness, you know, being able to see progress and being able to see something that I've created. And I don't wanna lose that. I don't wanna ever, you know, pick up that hook and get yarn and not feel that. Um, because burnout is real and it can happen in anything that we consider a hobby or our jobs or a relationship. We have to be able to, again, recognize what our limits are and set boundaries for ourselves, And that's very important. Next, I want you to challenge yourself. Um, it's very important, especially whenever you are working in a craft that requires a certain amount of skill, that you are pushing yourself and that you're educating yourself on new techniques, um, on new patterns, new stitches, new things like that so that you can kind of push yourself out of your box, you know? Um, Again, if we're doing a lot of the same things, you know, a lot of the same types of patterns, a lot of the same, you know, difficulty level, sometimes we get complacent or sometimes we might get bored. I like to challenge myself every once in a while because it kind of keeps me on my toes, you know, or whenever I make something difficult or that looks difficult, I guess, um, it makes me feel good because whenever I'm done, I'll look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I made that, you know? Um, and I love that feeling. And I know that y'all have got to love that feeling as well. Whenever you complete something, you know, that is kind of like a step up from where you were before, um, it's always really nice. And I love whenever people can recognize that too. Um, I love whenever I go to, you know, my craft fairs or I post something here on YouTube or on Instagram and people say, wow, this is really good, you know, or this is, you know, really great. Um, this is a big improvement, you know, it's really nice to get those types of compliments, but it's important to do these things for ourselves too. You know, we don't want to stay um, at the same level. We want to be able to grow. So try to challenge yourself, try to push yourself outside of your box. You know, um, if you're mostly doing easy patterns, try to do, you know, maybe an e intermediate level. If you're mostly doing intermediates, try to try to find a, a good transition pattern that you can go into um, just as a way to, you know, really get you to focus in and learn new things and help you fall in love with this craft all over again. Um, and then the last two that I have, I think are probably two of the most important ones. Um, and the first one that I'm going to talk about is using your resources. Um, this is very important whenever you're in, and I use this word a lot, this community, because sometimes we do get lost or we get discouraged or we get confused. Um, and it's really easy to get down on ourselves. Like what I was saying earlier, um, have someone that you can reach out to, uh, go to YouTube look on Pinterest, get on Instagram, know that all these different things have tools for you to use that can help you with whatever you're going through as far as your work is concerned. Um, there have been times where I've looked up stitches online or I have went to Pinterest and I've found patterns um, or different stitches that um, I was confused about and it's helped me kind of walk through it. I've got books that I've used. I have people that I've met or that I've worked with that I will message and say, hey, can you help me with this? Or, hey, do you have any ideas or opinions or thoughts? Um, use those resources, take advantage of them. They're there for a reason. Uh, don't feel like that just because you're struggling with something, it means that you shouldn't talk about it or that you shouldn't you know, reach out to somebody. Uh, Lots of people will say, oh, I don't want to be a burden or uh, I don't want other people to, you know, know that I'm having a hard time. Everybody goes through difficult times, especially in a field of work where, you know, there is a lot of artistic expression that is involved. <laughs> um, we doubt ourselves. We just do. You know, it's something that we go through. Uh, and it's important to be able to have someone to bounce those feelings off of. 
and I think it's great whenever we are able to, you know, look at the people that we're surrounding ourselves, even if it's a family member or a friend, um, another crocheter that you go to, you know, a crochet night with, or another knitter that you meet at a yarn shop, or, you know, anybody like that. Make sure that you are taking advantage of having those people in your life and those resources in your life, because it's very important. And then my very last one is remember why you started. So many times we will start things, not even just crochet or knitting. Um, we'll start certain jobs or we'll start certain projects um, and we'll forget why we did it in the first place. And it's really good to go back and to think, why am I doing this, you know? Am I serving my purpose? Am I, you know, meeting my goal for what I wanted to achieve by doing this or by engaging in this activity? You know, I wanted to learn to crochet initially so that I could make a baby blanket for my sister whenever she was pregnant. I learned that it was a good way to help me control my anxiety whenever I was doing it. And so my new goal after I finished the initial one was I want to continue to crochet because it helps me, you know, manage my anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so remember why you're doing this, you know. Uh, sometimes we have to sit down and think about that. And that's not a bad thing. I just don't ever want anybody to feel lost or to, you know, get to a point where they're not enjoying it, you know, because at the root of it, it should be something that you enjoy. Um, no matter what you're doing, you know, some people do this as a job or if it's a hobby, but again, you should enjoy those things. You should enjoy your jobs. You should enjoy your hobbies that you have. Um, and so just, just think about, you know, what was this intended for? Why did you pick up your crochet hook for the first time? Why did you pick up knitting needles for the first time? And just sit there and think and say, you know, am I doing what I set out to do? Am I, am I happy with what I am, what I, with what I'm doing, with what I'm putting out there, um, with the person that I've become since I started doing this? And I think those are important questions for us to ask, um, because it is very easy for everything to just get clouded and, you know, it turn into this, you know, competition or, you know, social media posting war or challenge or you know who can make the prettiest this or that or you know it's it's important that we're doing this because first and foremost we love it um, so I hope those were some good helpful tips for you guys again those are things that I try to follow myself um, so I'm not just saying these and not you know practicing them I'm definitely a practice what I preach type of person um, so I would love to hear, um, what some of y'all's coping skills are to help with your anxiety or your stress or your depression or whatever you're going through, um, that don't involve yarn. Um, you know, we spent this whole video talking about different ways that we can, you know, work with this craft and work with, you know, the the artistic ability and expression that we have, um, what are y'all doing to help yourselves in other ways? And I think it's important to, to look at that as well. And just as another way to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to do a giveaway. So I have two balls. Uh, I mean, I guess, I don't know if this is actually called a ball. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> Red Heart with Love Metallic. If you can see that. Um, and this is, I think it's 200 yards. Yes. 200 yards, 4.5 ounces, 127 grams in the color olive. Um, and so I have two of these and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Also hit the little bell so that you get the notifications. I've noticed and I've heard other YouTubers talk about that 
the videos and uploads are not all showing up if you don't hit the bell whenever you subscribe, which I think is ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, you would think subscribing would be enough, but hit that little bell too. Um, I've started doing it on all the channels that I subscribe to also, even though I haven't had any issues. If y'all have had any issues, please let me know. Um, but I haven't had any issues with seeing any of the people's videos just from hitting subscribe. But um, comment below coping skills that you use or different ways that you manage your day-to-day -day stressors. And I'm going to pick a winner from the comments one week from the day that this video is posted, which will be, uh, what is today? Today is May 21st, and I'm going to post this on the 22nd, so this giveaway will close at midnight on May 29th, and then I will pick a winner. So, thank you all again. I hope that you were able to learn something. Um, I appreciate you tuning in to a different kind of video from me, not so much yarn-related or project-related, um, but I really appreciate it. You know, I really love getting to incorporate my job and my love for this craft because I feel like it's helped me so much. I just want to do whatever I can to help others. So thank you all again, and I will see you next time. Bye.